Well, welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name's Gavin Smith, and if you're joining us on video, then here's a little wave. We're excited to have Nigel Ring join us. I've never actually heard the word wicked and accountant <laughs> put in the same sense. <laughs> One of the big questions and challenges I think that people are facing is is the idea of now setting a deficit budget. Mm. Churches who, who are looking ahead and, and they've, they've, they've done their budget, they've got their facts together, they've pulled it together and they're looking and saying, we are going to be 25, 50,000 short, 100,000 some churches face huge deficits. Um, tell me about deficit budgets mm. and what you're experiencing yep. on this. The, the first off is there is often a kind of unspoken best practice that a budget has to be balanced. If that makes sense. And it's a, don't get me wrong, it's a good principle. It's always a good principle that you've got a, a balanced budget at the start of the year that your income is matching expenditure. And that is a, a brilliant place. Now, the problem with that is if your organization is, is in a factual place that that is highly unlikely, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is almost. Um, it's almost not good financial governance to set a very high target to say we're gonna this is what we're gonna meet if that mm. makes sense. So you end up in this place of a deficit budget, and uh, deficit budgets are tricky because they carry some weight about them. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a few caveats with that. The first of all is a deficit budget is not sustainable in the long term, yeah, but may well be sustainable in the short term, mm-hmm. and that's a really important distinction Mm -hmm. is are we setting a deficit budget here where we are quite in control we've got our reserves and we've got our reserves policy which we've which we're aware of and we've had for a number of years and we know the reserves we need to have in the bank for us to continue as an organization for the long term in case something Mm -hmm. happens Mm -hmm. or in case there's some other unexpected event that's going to take us take a hit into our reserves mm. if that is your situation then navigating a, a deficit budget is a much more plain sailing because with some good financial storytelling explanation of the road that you're walking on of this is the the immediate short-term outlook that we're looking at these are the challenges and these are the you know this one is the faith point of what we're yeah. what we're praying for, what we're aiming for. And two, these are some of the practical steps which we're going to work towards of actually getting to a place where we are setting mm-hmm. uh, a balanced budget. So mm-hmm. that's, the for me, the first thing is, is this a short-term de- uh, deficit budget? Have you got the reserves in the bank where it's not, you know, it's not causing you, a, a the organization, a real issue, as in it's not going to be able to carry on going? Yeah. And you've got, you can then work out a plan as to how things are then going to go. So that's the first thing I'd, I'd share. And I think that's probably for quite a few church and organizations, that's their reality at this moment in time. Yeah, with, that could be, uh, yeah. With with challenges of, you know, I know lots of organizations have had to make really tricky decisions. And I know actually when we last spoke on the pod, I think we, I think it was, I think it was May 20, mm-hmm. May 22. Um, and the, the financial crisis was, was, was not quite at its peak. No, it wasn't. It was getting, no. And I remember we we were talking about the question you'd asked me is where where would a would you advise investing? And one of the things we, I remember we we're talking about was investing yeah. in in staff. But yeah. I know now we've we're a number of months down the line. Those difficult conversations are very real. Is that yeah. if we're going to be able to bless our staff, or not just bless our staff, just honour our staff by giving them you know essentially a real term increase in wage so that it's meeting the inflation that has resulted in a deficit budget and those those decisions are hard because an increase in staff wages is a is a long-term commitment it's not just a uh, uh, we need to do this to the the building or we've we've our energy prices are much higher they may come down but obviously we don't know but as staff wages that's 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 it then if that makes sense so that's that's a tricky com- there's some tricky mm. things that churches are having mm. to navigate at the moment and if that's you um you know hat off to you keep persevering through through those um because they can be they can be tricky conversations to navigate and then there's for me there's the second discussion which is when a deficit budget is either very large or you have multiple years where 
where it's looking like things are on the more unsustainable side. Yeah. And that's when the kind of the budgeting finance conversations become quite tricky. And my advice, if there are churches out there where that is potentially looking like it might be, mm-hmm. is is going back to what we started about at the, the kind of the start of, of the pod was talking about facts and those base that the base layer of actually factually how long do we have yeah. to be able to navigate and and pursue avenues faithfully pray and see until we know we need to make more decisions if that mm-hmm. makes sense so yeah i think they're my two top tips of depending on how how you navigate deficit budgets depending on where you know what where you financially are as an organization if that makes yeah. sense so, yeah no so that's, i don't know if you have any comeback on that but they're my yeah comments. no it's it's helpful because I, I guess we, we've not had to set deficit budgets before so my experience is 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 very low on this you know if i'm honest mm. um i do interact with a lot of churches who are who are doing that and like you say the deficit has been we want to support staff and give them you know an increase in wage to help them through this time and and i love that and i say applaud that kind of faith applaud that kind of decision you know mm. Um, to care for people and I love that I, I think um, I think we we do want it to get to a point where it balances and I think yep. that's where an exercise of the forecasting of what you're talking about that sits alongside your budgeting is so is so useful yeah. it, you know what what cutbacks can we make in the budget that can allow us over a period of time to build to a point where that deficit is finished in year two you know yeah. and so uh, you know there's some churches out there who aren't budgeting at all and so mm. There, we want to start a conversation on that and we can come back to that later but those who are regularly budgeting and are in a deficit budget take it take the time to look at it over the two three year period mm. and look at some of the cutbacks that you might be able to make yeah. and that allow you then at this point i can see the information is pointing that actually we're going to be okay yeah um yeah, and i think okay. using our reserves policy and using some of those funds mm. it's legitimate to use it at this mm. point you know this yeah. is a a crisis that people are are facing and so we can often think when is that rainy day well you know sometimes we need permission say actually it's okay to dip into these funds now Mm. and and i'd be encouraging trustees pccs and leadership teams let's talk about this what Mm. do we need realistically in the reserve fund and what can we move across to general funds that's going to help us in the next two years Mm. and and we can we can forecast it say it is going to be two years mm. um and um but also you know let's pray let's inform even informing the church about a deficit could can feel like quite a negative thing mm. yes but actually it might cause people to say we need to step into that gap we need to help what could yeah. we do that actually might look like ministry being different in terms of its cost, maybe there's there's more people that we can throw at something that's going to reduce the expenditure. Um, where can people give? Uh, we we were given a, a, an out of the blue donation this week, mm-hmm. as we were talking about right. What does it mean to pass the gospel on to the next generation? Mm-hmm. Um, people hear that priority and go, I want to get behind that. I'm wondering what the budget is for that priority, mm-hmm. and having conversation around that stirs people to say, Yeah, I'd I'd love to give more to that and commit to give more to that over the next couple of years so so all of these things are helpful things i think to to be chatting about and getting people involved in and being honest about it and and doing that